Hello, my name is Kimberly Hilton and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be swatching out some uh, colors and making these little swatch cards. These are um, business card size um, little pieces of watercolor paper. And I like to keep them in a folder that way um, when I'm picking out uh, what colors I want to use for a particular painting, I can look exactly at the, um, the swatches and know what color I want. Um, it tells you how opaque or transparent a color is. It also tells you if the color will lift or not. And then you can have um, the mass tone and take it all the way down to a wash. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I got a few uh, color. I'm actually behind on my color chart. I have more colors um, that I need to add to this. But um, they just take. Uh, I just bought these business card um, sheet protectors, and they fit right inside the sheet protectors like that and um, you can keep everything organized. I used to just have these all in a you know a pile together and it was very disorganized but um, I can keep all my blues together, all my reds together and so on. And um, some of these is just I just cut up a um, watercolor that I wasn't really happy how it turned out and just painted the swatches on the other side. So you don't have to use um, your good watercolor paper um, to do this. I do like to use watercolor paper that I usually paint on that way um, I know what results I will get when I make my swatches or when I do my painting. Um, and um, that's about it for for this this part. I just keep everything, and these are little dot cards from Daniel Smith. Um, I bought those so that I could um, it would help <laughs> a cheaper way to help me decide what uh, colors I need, and um, you know because a lot of colors are very similar, and you don't really need all the colors um, that they sell, of course. And uh, usually, I like to go with the non-toxic version of the paint. As you can see here, um, you know, I wrote out the pigment numbers, and then um, on the ones that are non-toxic, those are the ones I like to buy. I have a few toxic colors that um, I'm not going to be repurchasing, <laughs> but. Um, I like to use non-toxic watercolors if it's possible and so I just keep everything in this folder and this was the I'd like to buy some of these I don't really have any of these these just came from that swatch they're the um, oh the the shimmery um, what are they um, I'm not sure what they're called but the shimmery ones uh, they're very pretty. I'd like to purchase them. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to show you that so you would know what we're doing. And um, I have a piece of water Arches watercolor paper. This is um, the brand I usually use. Um, I'm not sponsored in any way by any brand I <laughs> tell you about. I'm just sharing with you what, what I use because people always ask that question and I always wonder when I'm watching a video wh what colors or brands they're using because you know um, as artists we we really we want to have a wide variety of things. We want to explore everything but it can get expensive and you know you end up with a lot of stuff that um, you know uh, that may not be as good quality as what you you know hope so then you end up buying something else and um, it will just save you money if if you know what to buy in the first place without having to buy it but um, so this is the little the little um, swatch card and um, it is I want to make sure I get them so they fit so about two inches by three and a half inches so now um, I'm just going to line up my paper if you don't have one of these cutting mats then um, 
a cut on a, a piece of cardboard or something so that you don't uh, don't hurt your table but I like having the cutting mats because you don't have to mark on your paper you just have to um, you know you can just line it up with your ruler and then um, just make your cuts that way so I'm just gonna cut every two inches Um, I think that's enough just to show you and then um, I'm gonna cut what did I say it was um, three and a half inches so now I'm just gonna cut some three and a half inches These cutting mats make um, your measuring a lot easier and your work a lot quicker. So I do recommend these. Okay. So I'm not going to do all of those. Um, I'll do more, but um, I just uh, wanted to show you how to cut those. And then now we're going to... Um, I'm going to show you how I divide off these little lines. So, I'm going to turn it sideways. You don't have to do it like this. I'm just showing you how I do it. And I usually use a Sharpie. They're waterproof. So, I just take the Sharpie and I draw the line. And then um, at the next uh, at the next uh, half inch mark, no, at down there. That would be one and a half inches from the top. And then make another line. And you can make that line thicker. Do I have it thicker? Okay, yeah. So you can make the line. Uh, as thick as you want it to be if you have one of the sharpies that has the thicker this would be probably be better if you had the thicker sharpies And so now all you do is um, write in, let's see, some of my new colors are, uh, I got this Daniel Smith Raw Sienna Light, so um, I will take my smaller one to write the pigment information. And Daniel 
Daniel Smith. And then the pigment number for this is PY42. So um, that's how you make the swatch cards. And then now I'm going to show you how um, how to uh, paint the swatch card. Now I like um, a little, if I can find it, I like the little flat brush. Uh, this one. This is the one I usually like to use. This is just a master's touch from Hobby Lobby. I think it's their store brand. And um, I think it's imitation squirrel maybe. I don't know. It's been a long time since I bought it. But um, it has good springiness. And um, I like it. So I'm just going to get some of this raw sienna. And... I guess um, put it in in there. Dip into a little bit of water and just activate it like how I would paint with it. And um, just Paint the swatch card. This is um, this is like a yellow ochre color to me. It it actually is the same pigment as my yellow ochre. So, um, but I think it's more transparent. We'll see. But I think it's more transparent than my yellow ochre. But yellow ochre, um, if you if you water it down enough, it's very transparent. So it's just um, according to how much water you use. But I do notice when I use the yellow ochre that sometimes it can get opaque on me pretty if I'm not careful. So I think um, this raw sienna light is like a more like a semi-transparent yellow ochre colors that's just my impression of it and now i'm just gonna wet the brush and just rinse it out and blot it off and just drag the um water down okay so that is um, that is all for this step of the um, of, of the card because we need to let that dry and then we'll we'll um, go in and um, take another line and go down so okay this is of course things shift when they dry but this is my da vinci yellow ochre and as you can see it it's a little i can already tell that it's more opaque than this this is a lot lighter um This is PY42 in the Da Vinci, which is a raw sienna deep. And um, it's more transparent than the regular yellow ochre. I think I may start using this one because it has a more golden um, color to it. This is Da Vinci's raw sienna, just the regular raw sienna. And it's a little more orange than um, 
the Daniel Smith Raw Sienna Light, which is PBR7, so that's like a like an earth cut, like a burnt sienna color. Because here is my uh, burnt sienna. So um, it just really gives you an idea of what your colors look like. Once this is dried, I'll come back and I'll paint this strip down. And then uh, once that has dried, we'll um, take a wet brush and lift out the white there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make some more swatches. Um, I'm not going to do that on camera because I'm, it's, you know, the same process. And then... Um, then I will come back and show you how to finish that up. So, I'll be right back. Okay, so, um, welcome back. This has had time to dry. And the next thing I'm going to do is just um, paint a, um, a line down the, um, down the side there. So that we can get, um, see what it looks like when we, we layer when we layer it. So I'm going to just go back into the Raw Sienna Light by Daniel Smith. And I'm just going to paint a straight line down. And this will let you see um, how dark it can get um, when you layer it. And then once that's dry, we'll come back and we will um, We'll um, lift out some of the paint and see how easy or hard it lifts. Okay, so the swatch card is dry now. And um, I'm going to show you the last step that we need to do in order to make these little um, little swatch cards. So we're just going to lift off, see how, how well it, the paint will lift off when we wet it with a uh, damp brush. So I just wet the brush and then I um, just dabbed it off on the paper towel and I'm just going to take and go across in a line and rinse it out, dab it off and just go back over that line. And um, it only took me two times and it's already lifted to the light of the paper. So. That tells me that this is a very good color to lift. It, it lifts very easily. So, um, as you can see, compared to the yellow ochre, which is PY 43 by Da Vinci, um, it lifted a lot better. It also lifted a lot better than the yellow ochre, or not yellow, yellow ochre, but Raw Sienna Deep by Da Vinci. Those are very close to the same color, but look look how well this one lifted compared to this one. Although this one is more transparent. So, um, all these colors are so similar. If you have one, you don't need the other. But, um, that is how you do these little swatch cards. And I'm going to continue doing that for several more colors till I get all the colors that I own swatched out. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you find it helpful. And if you like this video, um, leave me a comment or a like. And consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Happy painting. Bye.